Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Isaiah counsels us in the first reading from today's Mass. We come together today to seek the Lord in word and sacrament, knowing that he can be found in Scripture, in the Holy Eucharist, and in each other. We call to him now, lifting our voices in song and prayer, aware of his closeness as we are gathered in his name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves today to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the source of mercy and forgiveness. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to eternal happiness. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy to our God, who is generous in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, 
that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim the Open our hearts, Lord, in the name of the Father and the Son, to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowner saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. On receiving it, they grumbled against the landowners saying, these last ones worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus, the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The parable in today's gospel will probably raise a few questions. An employer pays all his laborers the same daily wage, whether they work 12 hours or just one hour. And he justifies what he did by saying, Am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Now let's try to shed some light on just a few questions you may have concerning this gospel. First, what is the gospel really about? This is a parable. What's a parable? A parable is a story Jesus made up to make a point, to teach a lesson. But to understand the point, we must not misunderstand the story. You see, the employer is not an uncaring person. He's quite the opposite. After the workday was over and it was time to pay up, the vineyard owner gave everybody exactly the same amount, 
which was a full day's pay regardless of the amount of hours they worked, even those who only worked one hour. Now, those who had started at dawn were furious. What's going on here, they said. We've worked 12 full hours. These guys worked only one hour, and they got the same pay that we got. The main focus of the story is not on the early 12-hour workers. They got what they earned, a just wage. The focus is on the latecomers, especially those who only worked one hour. More accurately, though, the stress is on the vineyard owner, the employer. He knew that the crew who only worked one hour was not thrilled over hard work, and still they touched his heart. He also know that if he pays them only what they deserve, they would have almost nothing to take home. The pay for an hour's work would not keep a family or feed the children. So out of pity for their poverty, he pays them a full day's wages. The owner is not being unreasonable. On the contrary, he is being compassionate and generous to the poor. Which brings us to a second question. What does this parable have to do with the kingdom of heaven? Very simply, this Jesus says is how God deals with men and women, with you and me. The way the vineyard owner acted toward his employees. This is what our God is like. He is merciful. He is generous. He is kind. The kingdom of God is a gift because the kingdom is won by grace, which is God's free giving. No one, however holy and devout he or she may be, can demand this from God. This grace, this gift of God's, is God's free giving. And what about those who come to God in their last hour? Will we begrudge God's generosity and say that he is unfair? Remember Good Friday on Calvary, when a criminal on his own cross begged Jesus to remember him at the coming of the kingdom? Jesus did not respond, Sorry, man, you're too late. You should have come to me sooner. Not at all. Remember Jesus said to the criminal, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Which brings us to a third point. What possible significance can the parable of the good employer have for you and me? We are to act toward others as Christ has acted toward us. Basic to Christian living is this awesome fact. All that is good in us is ours, not by right, but by gift. Sure, there's much we have earned, our degree of education, our salaries, our homes, our families, but all this is possible only because so much has been given to us by God. For example, life itself, eyes to see, hands to touch, a mind to think and shape ideas. One final thought. What can we give God in return for all these gifts? Very simply, we are to give as God has given to us. We must be generous to the needs of others, others meaning our brothers and sisters in Christ. A man once asked his guarding angel, I'm always being asked to give. Give to this organization, give to that organization, give to help that cause. How long must I keep giving and giving? The angel replied, just keep giving till God stops giving to you. And we know our good and generous God will never stop giving to us. And what he gives to us, we must accept with gratitude and thanksgiving, today and always. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and faith, let us place our prayers and needs before God, our Heavenly Father. For church leaders, may the peace and mind of Christ be their guide and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in civil power and authority, may Christ strengthen their conviction for peace and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are facing difficult trials and challenges in their life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the outpouring of the Holy Spirit continue to make us holy in the sight of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those working to curtail the spread of the coronavirus, God will give them insight, protect those caring for the sick, and guide those who are researching cures and vaccines. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they feast at the heavenly banquet of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now for those intentions that are silent in your hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we place our prayers and our needs before you today with great confidence. We know that you will hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. 
for your goodness we receive the bread that we offer to you. For the earth, the work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. of all creation, but through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer to you, through the vine work of your hands, and for us, our spiritual grace. With humble spirits, with contrite hearts, we will be accepted by you, O Lord, and our sacrifice in your sight today be pleasing to you. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. The sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we would be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy. For also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Since we are unable to receive Christ sacramentally in the Holy Eucharist, let us now pray that he may come spiritually into our hearts and souls at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite me wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Father 
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity to extend our best wishes and congratulations to nine of our young people who will receive the sacrament of confirmation this weekend. Uh, we ask God that he may give them the gift of his spirit so that not only may they be uh, confirmed members of his church, but also that they may indeed be his witness to the ends of the earth. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Till heaven 